guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'll be going through the selection process of how to apply for some of the best UK flying schools such as CA Oxford and L3 Harris, how I got into them, the softwares and websites I used and the preparation I took. Now last year I was trying to find YouTube videos on how to pass the selection process for both CA Oxford and L3 Harris, however I couldn't really find anything specific online so I had to do a lot of research and digging myself. Um, due to this reason, I am creating this video that will help future cadets um, pass the selection process. Now, let's start with the CAE selection process. Um, so firstly, you apply online and you submit your application for either cadet program or integrated ATPL route. This is where you include your personal details, your qualification, your education history, your employment status, where you currently work and if you've had any flying experience. Now, this is just the screening phase, and this is where CA Oxford want to see if you meet the necessary skills, um, if you have the necessary requirements, and if you're eligible to become a cadet with CA Oxford. Now, the selection team will get in contact with you within a couple of days via email, letting you know if you've passed the screening phase or not. Now, once you've passed the screening phase, um, you'll be invited to come and sit the Stage 2 assessment. Now, the Stage 2 assessment takes place in Kidlington, Oxford, and the assessment costs £160 to sit. Now, the Stage 2 assessment is a one-day process, um, which is all computer-based, and it uses a software called ADAPT. Now, ADAPT consists of a maths test, a physics test, and a numerous aptitude test. Now, you can prepare for the ADAPT test that consists of the maths test, the physics test, and the numerous aptitude tests by visiting latestpilotjobs.com and purchasing their CAE bundle. Now, the CAE bundle costs about £30, and you can practice all of these assessments. Now, you can also purchase the SkyTest software online that costs £70. Um, here, there are more practice questions and maths and physics questions, and there are also more levels of difficulty for the aptitude test. Now, you can also purchase the official CAE maths and physics bundle from the CAE website. Now, the maths test is at a GCSE standard, and you have to work out things such as area, circumference of a circle, conversion rates, simple algebra and other maths related topics. Now if you are someone who has completed A level maths recently, um, this should be very easy for you, it's only GCSE level. However, if you are someone that hasn't touched maths recently, I believe that you should prepare beforehand and get a lot of practice done as there's a lot of mental maths calculations. Now for the physics test, it's at a GCSE standard and I highly recommend that you go through a GCSE book as things such as wavelengths, velocity, acceleration and moments and other topics come up. Now you can practice the physics test by going on the CAE website and purchasing the CAE bundle uh, but you can also go to latestpilotjobs.com and purchasing the physics bundle um, and you can complete their questions from there. Now for the aptitude test I purchased a joystick and I was able to use a joystick and use it in the sky test, aptitude test and the latestpilotjobs.com website and this has really helped me practice for the aptitude test beforehand and I got to feel for the real deal. Um, now for all these tests in the stage to assessment I think it's very important and key that you practice a lot beforehand um, and you familiarise yourself of some of the assessments that may come up. Now if you were to be successful in the stage to assessment um, CAE will get in contact with you within a couple of days via email letting you know that you've passed and they'll invite you to come and sit the stage 3 assessment. Now you can book a stage 3 assessment online via the CAE website. Now the, C the stage 3 assessment also takes place in Kidlington, Oxford and it costs £185 to sit the assessment. Uh, now there will be a one-to-one -one interview and in the one-to-one -one interview, uh, the interviewer really wants to see why you want to become a pilot, what you know about the job, um, what you know about the aviation industry, how the aviation industry is changing in the near future and what you know about the course. Now the interview itself is split into two parts. You've got the technical slash aviation related questions and you've got your competency based questions. Now for the technical slash aviation related questions, you can get questions such as why do you want to become a pilot? How do you think the industry is going to change in the future? Um, what is fly-by-wire? What is a glass cockpit? How does a jet engine work? How does a plane fly? How is lift generated? Now these are the sorts of questions that you can get asked for the technical slash aviation related questions but for the competency based questions yeah, this is where the interviewer wants to see your thought process and your decision making 
um, how you manage conflict, if you are someone who's flexible, what is your leadership style? Are you someone that can take feedback and then improve on your areas of weakness? Now, you can get a lot of questions um, such as, tell me a time you had to lead, tell me a time you had to make a critical decision, tell me a time you had to challenge someone. Um, and now it's important that you practice your answers beforehand and you make some examples. Um, you might want to bullet point your examples before you go into the interview so you've got it at the back of your head. However, you don't want to sound memorised and rehearsed. Um, you don't want to sound like a tape recorder and start saying all of this to the interviewer because the interviewer would know straight away that you've memorised this and this is not natural. And the most important thing about sitting, doing that interview is you want to sound natural, you want to sell yourself, you want to let them know why you want to become a pilot, why you've come to CAE, what is it about that CAE you like and that why you want to join them. Now, I think it's very important that when you do um, answer the questions for the interview, that you follow the STAR technique. Now, STAR technique is an abbreviation for S is for situation, T is for task, A is for action, and R is for result. This is a very good way of answering your questions. Now, if you were to follow this structure, you would be very precise, accurate, and you won't forget anything to include, and you won't go off track while answering the questions. Now, for the interview, you can go to latestpilotjobs.com. Um, there's a lot of questions that you can find there um, that could potentially come up in the interview, and this can really help you prepare beforehand so you know what sort of questions might come up. Um, but what I did at home was I got my parents and I practiced the interview by my parents just asking me some um, technical questions as well as the competency-based questions, and they would see how I would answer my questions. But essentially, when you answer your questions, um, talk in a very calm manner, a professional manner, um, don't waffle, um, speak very clearly, um, get straight to the point, um, don't be sound like you've memorised things, just be natural and free-flowing, and express yourself of why you want to become a pilot. Um, and why you want to join CAE. Now the interviewer isn't there to make you fail, the interviewer is there just to select a few people that they believe are ready to become a cadet pilot and they believe have the traits and qualities to become a pilot. Um, now last year I realised that some of my examples I would have to give in the interview would have to result in um, would have to be about in a customer facing environment um, and I didn't have any experience so I went and worked at Stansted Airport and I got a lot of experience insight of how the aviation industry works. Um, now I think this experience paid off in my interview as I was able to relate my answers to the airport. I think if you were someone who's very young, um, you could do something like this where you go uh, work somewhere part time and you build your experience and, and, and your exposure. But many people may be watching this video that have a lot of exposure and experience um, and that's fine. Um, you can still set this interview, but for someone who's very young and doesn't have any experience apart from maybe school, it's quite good to maybe go and get a part-time job just to get that experience. Now, there are only a couple of differences between CAE Oxford and L3 Harris. Um, now, for the selection process, at both places you have to sit the maths and one-to-one -one interview, but for CAE Oxford you have to sit a physics test, which you don't have to sit at L3 Harris. However, at L3 Harris, you have to sit the four online assessments and the group interview, which you don't have to sit at CA Oxford. Now, let's move on to the L3 selection process, and it's pretty similar to the CA Oxford selection process. So, obviously, you apply online, um, you submit your application for a cadet program or the integrated ATPL, and just a screening phase, you wait to pass, and they'll let you know that you've passed or failed, and they'll tell you then to sit four online assessments. Now, the four online assessments include a maths test, a multitasking test, and two behavioural questionnaires. Now, once you have completed online assessments, I'll let you know within a couple of days if you've passed or failed. If you have passed, you'll get another email letting you know that you are now eligible to now come and sit the four assessments. Now, you can complete the four assessments either in Nursling, Southampton, or at their Gatwick branch. Now, the four assessments include a maths test, aptitude test, a group interview, and a one-to-one -one interview. Now for the maths test, this time you'll be given a calculator and uh, it'll be to a GCSE level and you'll be asked to work out things such as the area of object, the circumference of a circle, um, just simple applied numeracy and other maths related topics. And as I've mentioned earlier, if you are someone who's done A-level maths recently, this should be fine for you. But if you are, if you haven't done GCSE maths in a couple of years, I recommend that you practice beforehand so you are up to the mark. 
Um, you can once again go to Lakers Pilot Jobs and purchase the L3 bundle, or you can go to Sky Test Software and get the L3 bundle and practice the maths test there. Now for the aptitude test, there are six tests uh, within the aptitude test, and this is spatial orientation, complex control, reaction speed, monitoring ability, multitasking capability, and multitasking com capability sonic. Now, you can practice these aptitude tests on latestpilotjobs.com or you can go to Sky Test software and practice there. Now, the uh, aptitude test at L3 Harris does not require a joystick and is completed with a mouse. I think it's very important that you practice beforehand so you get a feel for the real deal. Um, now, for the group interview, um, you'll be taken to a room where there'll be two interviewers and you'll be working alongside the other people that have come to sit uh, the L3 assessments. Now, you'll be given a scenario, and the interviewer wants to assess how you communicate as a group, um, how you engage with everyone, uh, whether you have certain traits and um, qualities a pilot should attain, and if you're an effective team member, if you are an effective communicator, you should be able to acknowledge others' ideas, um, but you should also be able to lead, but also take a step back where and when required. Uh, in this situation, you don't want to talk too much, but you don't want to talk too, le le too less. Just have the correct balance. Um, now, you don't want to talk over others, and you don't want to lose focus. Now, these are the do's and don'ts of the group interview. But more importantly, just be yourself and be natural and be truth truthful to yourself. Now, for the one-to-one -one interview at L3 Harris, it's pretty much the same as the one-to-one -one interview at CE Oxford. It's split into two parts. You've got competency-based questions and the technical questions. Now, once again, um, the interviewer just wants to know why you want to become a pilot, what you know about the job, um, what you know about the course. Now, for the competency-based questions, you can get asked things like, tell me a time you want to lead, tell me a time you made a critical decision, tell me a time you motivated someone, tell me a time you challenged someone, tell me a time you worked with an effective team member. As mentioned previously, it's very important that you incorporate the STAR technique within all your answers. Uh, for the selection process at L3, you'll be required to go to either Southampton or Gatwick. And for the selection process at CA Oxford, you'll be required to go to Kidlington and Oxford. Now, if you don't live within 30 minutes proximity, I think it's important that you go the night before, get some good sleep so you'll be relaxed, fresh in the morning and just ready to go. I wouldn't say it's wise to travel on the day of your assessment unless you live in, within a 30 minutes proximity. Um, because normally the assessment starts at 8.30 to 9 o'clock. Now, if you live very far, you would have to leave your house quite early. Um, and I think you can get very tired just getting to the assessment centre. Um, now that I've mentioned everything, I hope all my tips help you guys pass your CA Oxford or L3 Harry selection process. I wish you guys the best of luck for whoever's applying. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I would also link the description for the softwares and websites in the description box. Um, thank you for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please like, share, subscribe and thank you once again for watching it.